Hello guys, Dan here from Dan's Tech, and in today's video guys, I'm going to be bringing you Q&A number 17. As I was again, I've kind of renamed this uh, series, it's going to be a, you know, subscriber Q&A. And um, yeah, without further ado, let's kind of jump into the video, and uh, as always, answer your questions on computer hardware, you know, questions about myself, general tech, troubleshooting, all that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, let's kind of get into it. So the first question is from Michael Cibran. Why didn't you install a terabyte SSD in your gaming PC? Now, quite, quite frankly, the quick answer to that is because you don't need that, to be honest. An SSD is there for fast booting and overall system responsiveness. And your system, which is your Windows OS, that is a nowhere near a terabyte. So I feel that buying a terabyte SSD, a little bit of a waste of money. And um, yeah, all your games and stuff are generally okay on a hard drive. So that's kind of, yeah, why I, I didn't buy a one terabyte SSD. Next question is from Tangent123456. Is it possible to combine a Radeon R9 390 with a GTX 970 uh, to increase performance, or is it only possible if it's the same GPU? Now, on the NVIDIA side, you do need to have a completely matching GPU. Um, uh, in terms of, say, say if you've got, say, uh, an MSI 970 and you've got like a Gigabyte 970, that again will work. I mean, you know, you do need the same card, but if it's, say, got a different cooler on it, uh, that is also fun. It's all about having the same GPU core. So if you've got, say, two, two 970s or two 980s, as soon, as soon as the chip in the actual card is the same and does have the same amount of video memory, you can just SLI the cards. And on the AMD side, um, you do have a little bit more flexibility. You don't, uh, say, need to have um, matching cards, say, all the time. I mean, the matching card thing, again, you know, buying two cards out of the same, it's all about the chip being the same, not, say, the cooler on the card. So, yeah, the AMD thing, that's also the same. However, you do get a little bit more flexibility, and I believe that um, as soon as the family of GPUs is the same, you can also, you know, slap them in crossfire. So you do get a little bit more flexibility, and to my understanding, um, you know, you can crossfire, say, a 290 and a 390. Um, I'm not 100% sure if you can do that, but I'm pretty sure I've read that on the internet and that is completely fine um, as it's kind of the same kind of family of GPU and um, to my understanding, as again, the 3 Nadi is kind of like a rebranded 2 Nadi. I know AMD have made a little bit faster and all that kind of stuff and made the tweaks, but it is kind of the same card. There we are. Or chip, shall I say. Next question is from Cameron Bang, uh, Bamberg. Uh, how come you don't use Scalic in your builds? Plus, how does this uh, sound as a system I might build for £1,000? Now, first up, for the Scalic thing, um, Scalic to me isn't very... Uh, you don't get much value. You're paying more um, for a Scalic board, and you're also paying more for a Scalic chip, and you aren't getting that much more performance. I know a lot of the Scarlet chips are actually clocked rather the same or lower and the cost more. So just think about that for a second. They're not worth it therefore. And here in the UK, they're actually very expensive. The 4790K CPU that I have, it's kind of the highest end i7 consumer chip on the LG1150 platform. That you can grab that for about 250 quid. While say the Scarlet i7, the 6700K, is about 40 50 pounds more here in the uk so it's not worth it and to my understanding 40 to 50 pounds is about 100 us dollars so it's really not worth it so yeah that's why i don't use skylake in my pc builds however i might be um you know including them in the more recent builds that i'll be doing in say two or three months as you know due to the pc builds about every but every four or five months, there we are. As for your PC, you've chose a, a Corsair Spec 03 case, an i5 6600K, Happy 212 Evo, very nice cooler, uh, ASOS Z170 Pro uh, Gaming, 16GB uh, of HyperX free RAM, GTX 980, Corsair RMI 750i, Samsung 850 Evo, and two 1TB Seagate Barracuda drives. One thing I want to let you know is that the 2TB Seagate Barracuda drives are around twice as fast, so if you just want to grab that one 2TB drive, That'll be good. Chosen SSD for your system for system responsiveness. That's great. Um, very nice cooler, as I mentioned. Your graphic card is very, very fast, and I believe your i5 should be um, should keep up indeed with that that 980. Um, the case as well is pretty damn good because they do make some very nice cases and the internal layout of their cases is just solid overall. As for your CPU and the motherboard that you've chosen, you have gone for a Scalic based system. If you are, say, in a country that's not the UK, then that's good. I don't know here in the UK if it's just if Scalic is just expensive or if it is just I, I don't know. Maybe it's a rip off in other places, but at the current moment, Scalic in the UK is 
not that good in terms of value and grabbing a say a z97 board and grabbing an i7 4790k and overclocking that is better yes and anyhow thanks for that question in terms of your pc builds it is good as i mentioned but if you can get a haswell or haswell refresh kind of base system then do that um because you know as i said scalic not that good value there we are next question is from is is it tillen uh Fugis? I, I I have no idea how to pronounce that name. Uh, hey Dan, uh, what do you suggest me uh, to buy? An AMD Arnon 270 or GTX 750 Ti? Now I have looked at these two cards and uh, when I was building my sister's gaming PC and looking at 100 pound graphic cards, the 750 Ti is to me the winner. Uh, you know, it does uh, support shadow play and also uh, many, many other features that do come with AMD, uh, with Nvidia cards. Um, the Arnon 270, I'm pretty sure that's a, a good card as well. It, 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 to me, it just depends which one you can get on sale. Which one uh, can you get on the cheap? Uh, the cards and tenor performance, to me, I think are... I, I think they do perform around the same. Um, but as I said, I did go for the 750 Ti in my sister's build, as that was relatively cheap when I purchased that. So, yes, there we are. Next question is from Harry Wynn. Hey, Dan, I'm not the most uh, techie person you'll meet, but if I was to follow this PC build... Um, but want to add a more expensive GP, uh, GTX card, is there, an, is there anything else I would have to change to be able to run this better graphics card? Thanks. So in, so you're on about the um, yeah, changing a GPU in a system. Typically, if you want to change a graphic card in a system, you can just take your old one out, put your new one in. You only, you only really need to check if you um, have the required power connectors on your power supply and chances are these days you are going to. I know a lot of the Nvidia cards now, but guess are that efficient with the Maxwell, um, you don't kind of need, you know, say two eight pins, you just need say like two six pins now. And a lot of power suppliers do have these six pins and a lot of power suppliers are very flexible, you know, say my power supply has the, uh, the, the six plus two pin connectors. So it's an eight pin or if you snap away the two, you get the six. Very, very flexible. So yeah, you just need to really check your power supply and just uh, think about your system. Is your CPU kind of fast enough and do you have the eight gig of RAM? And just, you know, just do some Googling to see if your CPU can kind of handle the graphic card that you put in. Um, but yeah, upgrading a graphic card in a system is the most popular thing that people do for gaming systems. So yes, there we are. Hope you answered that one. Next question is from Danny Boy. Hey Dan, need a little bit of help with my system. It concerns a GTX 980 uh, gigabyte wind force, an i5 4690K, very nice i5 that uh, on a Z97 uh, motherboard. If I wanted to get another GTX 980, what motherboard do you suggest as, as my current one does not support SLI? Also, I have a 600 watt power supply. Well, I need to get a 750 watt. Thanks. Uh, uh, um, you probably won't need a 750 watt power supply. A 600 watt should do you. Uh, okay for two 980s. Um, in terms of a board that supports SLI, uh, if you are wanting to stay on the Z97 platform and you know keep your i5, I would suggest my other board, the Gigabyte Z97, is it X-SLI? Very, very solid board. Get it to around 100 quid here in the UK. Um, also, um, I would recommend the uh, the MSI. Is it the MSI Gaming 5? I think one of my friends, Ben, picked it up. Very, very solid board, and I do believe that supports SLI. If it doesn't, well, I suppose you can let me know in the comments. There we are. But yeah, um, yeah, there we are. You don't need a 750 watt power supply for two 980s. They're very, very efficient cards, thanks to the Maxwell architecture from NVIDIA. So next uh, question is from Liam Gore. Um, I get a, I'm getting an SSD uh, from my computer soon. I'm just wondering how do I put my Windows on the SSD from my hard drive? Now, if you're wanting to move your OS from your hard drive to the SSD and not reinstall, say, your Windows and having to install your drivers and stuff like that, which can be a bit of a ball leg, the easiest way to do it is to... Um, uh, is to uh, get some cloning software uh, as soon as you're able to plug your SSD into your computer and um, yeah yeah plug it into your computer if if this is with one of these um, one of these adapters or if it's just plug it in you know via the SADA uh, data and SADA power connector um, yeah you want uh, data migration software if you are getting an, a, a Samsung SSD Samsung on the website do include some software which only works with Samsung SSD so if you're getting something like a Samsung 850 or 840 that they've uh, just released. Uh, that one's kind of like a cheaper 850. It doesn't, it's not rated to last as long and all this kind of stuff. Uh, same speed though, so yeah, so good. Anyway, that's the question. Yeah, migration software, uh, Samsung SSD, grab their own magician software type thing. Um, if you, um, yeah, just Google some. Um, Acronis, 
um, uh, reflect uh, macro and reflect it's called very very solid options and I believe um, they do have free options available so that's all good that's all good so next question is from Christopher Addy does it make more sense to get a Xeon E3 1231v3 on i5 4600k for gaming and everyday use I think the Xeon is a bit more like an i7 but will it hold up to gaming the Xeon chips uh, especially the one you've mentioned I did google this one uh, the E3 yeah yeah the Xeon E3 uh, 1231v3 the v oh yeah what a mouthful um that chip is uh, very, very similarly, uh, you know, got very, very similar specs to the i5 that you've uh, said. Um, uh, yeah, Xeons are pretty good for gaming. A Xeon is essentially, to me, an i5 without integrated graphics. And if you can get it on the cheap and, you know, cheaper than the i7, uh, you know, the i7 or i5 kind of equivalent, then grab it. Uh, Xeon, yeah. You, you are correct, a Xeon is, is a lot like an Intel Core i3 or 5 or i7 processor. It's just without an integrated graphics, you are never going to overclock a Xeon uh, because you know, they're not unlocked like many of the K parts, say like the i5 46 and k that you've mentioned. But yeah, Xeons, they're brilliant if you can find a board that supports the Xeon and as I said, you get it on the cheap, grab it, but um, in general, an i5 46 and k is pretty damn good. You can overclock it and uh, the value there is it is it is definitely there that i5 4600k is very very popular same as the 4790k the you know the i7 very very solid options but um yeah that's the question the xeon very good value for money if you can get it on the cheap and you know particularly cheaper than the core option you know the intel core option last question is from specific j uh, what's a good cpu and gpu temperature program i've used three and each one has totally uh, different temps uh, i can't tell which one is correct now this is quite strange because um, from all the programs i've used they've all kind of reported the same temperatures and uh, i don't know if, if you're mainly on on about your gpu temperatures reporting different temps but uh for a cpu i recommend core temp i really do love core temp you can minimize it in your kind of um your notification area so that's all good and um as well as core temp i use real temp as well uh, in terms of temperatures on my i7 anyway it does report exactly the same so that's all good in terms of gpu temperatures um you're only really going to find out a gpu temperature by um downloading a piece of say overclocking software um say like msi afterburner evga precision x they all give you they should all give you um your gpu temperature and typically they should all report the same it's quite strange that you are that you know you've used three and they all have different temps uh, that is pretty strange um very, very strange make sure you've got all, all your drivers installed um particularly for your gpu and hopefully that should kind of fix itself there we are anyway guys that's kind of the end of the q a we've kind of been going now for for 12 minutes um, you know, hope you've enjoyed. If you guys have got a question for the next kind of episode, do leave them in the comment section down below, and um, yeah, I'll get to you. Uh, you know, get, get back to you in the next Q and A. And um, you know, like I usually do, I might even just post a text response if um, I feel like it. There we are. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Please feel free to like, comment, and also subscribe. And yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Goodbye.